So I was reading through the comments on the philosophy of the killing joke video from a few weeks back and I noticed something that drew my attention. A couple of commenters brought the idea of hypersanity arguing that the Joker isn't insane at all and in fact he is hypersane. So I thought that today we should delve into the madness and take a closer look at the Joker again and try to establish what hypersanity is and whether we can classify the Clown Prince of Crime within this category. I think the first thing that we have to do is to define what sanity truly is. The Oxford English Dictionary describes sanity as the ability to think and behave in a normal and rational manner, with the word originating in the Middle Ages in England and France deriving from the Latin word sanitas meaning healthy. Sanity refers to the soundness and healthiness of the human mind as opposed to insanity. In modern society, these ideas have become exclusively synonymous with compass mentis, the Latin term for having the mastery of one's mind, in contrast to non compass mentis, meaning a troubled conscious or insane. Hypersanity or supersanity was first used in Grant Morrison's Arkham Asylum, a serious house on serious earth, where in the book, the Joker's therapist, Dr. Ruth Adams, states the following. It's quite possible that we may actually be looking at some sort of super sanity here, a brilliant new modification on human perception, more suited to urban life at the end of the 20th century. He creates himself each day, he sees himself as the lord of misrule and the world as the theatre of the absurd. R.D. Lang, a Scottish psychologist who wrote extensively on mental illness and psychosis, discusses the idea of hypersanity in his work, The Politics of Experience. He introduces the unique conceptualization that mental disturbance isn't so much a breakdown, but instead a breakthrough, a stage in a healing process containing the possibility of entry into a realm of hypersanity. In short, hypersanity is essentially when you've reached a point that you are so sane that you appear insane to the rest of the world. Your actions and choices may appear bizarre in the minds of those around you because those around you cannot comprehend the world the way you can. A clever example that I found to explain this revolves around a clock. Imagine sanity as a regular ticking clock, aware of one's actions and purpose. Insanity is a broken clock, unable to conform to the social expectations, i.e. to tick, and unable to control its actions. Hypersanity, therefore, is the person watching the clock, aware of the clock's action and purpose, but on a more comprehensible scale. And going back to Morrison's Arkham Asylum, the Joker psychiatrist states that the Joker seems to have no control over the sensory information he's receiving from the outside world. He can only cope with that chaotic barrage of input by going with the flow. That's why some days he's a mischievous clown, others he's a psychotic killer. He has no real personality, he creates himself each day. Morrison's interpretation of the Joker is fascinating to me because he's so much of a mystery box. In the prose issue of Morrison's run on Batman after being shot in the head in the first issue, the Joker restructures his own personality to suit this new experience. We see him cycle through all of the previous Joker personalities from the wacky prankster of the Silver Age to the Dark Age serial killer Joker and constructs a new Joker out of the ruins of his own mind. And maybe this also has something to do with the three Joker theories opened up by DC Rebirth. But the idea being basically that the Joker's mind constantly breaks itself down and rebuilds new personalities to suit the world around him. These new personalities are insane and monstrous by any normal standard. But this is not a mental disorder in any conventional sense. It's qualitatively a different type of consciousness. And Morrison isn't alone in depicting the Joker as being super sane. These same ideas are presented in a variety of mediums from Alan Moore's The Killing Joke to on-screen adaptations such as The Dark Knight. As Joker states in The Killing Joke, insanity is the emergency exit, and his entire scheme to turn Commissioner Gordon mad is just to prove his absurdist worldview holds true to this idea, with Joker's absurdism going hand in hand with his super sanity. And as he also says in the 2008 film The Dark Knight. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. And it's clear that these themes are prevalent throughout so many different interpretations of the Joker that it can't just be coincidence. Hypersanity is part of the Joker's DNA and Morrison's writing of the character really exemplifies this. Morrison uses this trait to explain why the Joker can change so drastically in each iteration that bear little similarities from Jack Nicholson to Heath Ledger and more recently Jared Leto. 
Think of the Joker like Doctor Who, he essentially regenerates himself from the ground up each time, changing his mindset, his personality and nature. And like Morrison writes in Arkham Asylum, he creates himself each day. That's why some days he's a mischievous clown and others he's a psychotic killer. And this is all down to the Joker's hypersanity. Joker is the man watching the clock, the pale man, the clown at midnight and the agent of chaos, the lord of misrule. He is whatever he needs to be at that moment and what the writers need him to be also. There are few characters in fiction with this level of fluidity who can change so much beyond recognition and yet still be so recognisable. And that's why no matter what ever happens to the Joker, it's always the Joker that seems to get the last laugh. Thank you so much for watching this video essay on the Joker and the ideas of hypersanity. This was an absolute joy to write and to edit and I'm quite happy with how it turned out. If you want some more Joker videos though, click the playlist below me which will take you to all of the Joker videos we've got on the channel and also I want to tell you about a great channel run by a few friends of mine and that's called Men Vs Movies. They're currently doing a whole rebranding and bringing in some new shows into the channel which all sound great, going along with their already great content and I definitely think you should check them out. I'll leave a link to them over there. And if you enjoyed this video make sure to like, comment and subscribe and stay up to date for the weekly comic book movie, TV related content. You follow me on Twitter at Owen Likes Comics and I'll see you next week. So until then, take care, keep reading.